what happened inside of the cockpit in the final moments before the crash. Well, our aviation attorney, good to see you, by the way. Good uh, to be here. Former Navy aviator himself, John Gagliano, is here. Uh, what kind of planes do you fly? I fly small single engine all the way up to the plane I flew in the Navy was 55,000 pounds. Wow. And, uh, it's a little bit bigger than the one. Have, have you ever uh, flown what Roy was? I haven't. Flying? They're a brand new plane. They yeah. just came out in 2014. There are less than 50 of them flying in the United States They're right now. Two seaters, right? They are. And uh, made by the Icon Company. Um, well, they, they can land on concrete, but also on the water. They can. Okay. Both. So, what were your thoughts then? Um, because when the news first came out, everyone was so you know heartbroken to hear about this crash. But then when the TMZ video came out and we could see it kind of moving in the air, this is from someone who was watching, what were your thoughts when you saw the video? There's a lot you can't see in that video, Alex. Uh, you can't see what was going on in the cockpit. No. You can't see if there were any problems in the, with the plane mechanically. You can't see if there was an emergency. You can't see what the winds were doing. No. Uh, one of these planes crashed earlier in 2017, hit the water pretty hard, did a lot of damage. The pilots were fine, but they blamed the shift in the winds for the hard landing. Mm -hmm. um, you can't see anything like that here. Would that in, little plane like this be a susceptible to wind shear more than other planes? It is. I'm glad you brought that up. Wind shear is when winds shift directions as mm -hmm. you descend. But that's, yeah, that's a... That's a good point. And we talk about when you descend, because this is a plane, because it, you can land on water and on the ground, I mean, the, people are saying in the video, he's going up and down and oh, it could it also be just that's how the plane works. You go and land in the water and then maybe you want to go up and land on the ground or... You practice yeah. touch and goes, mm -hmm. yeah. You do. You practice landings. That's how you get good at them. Um, you practice them with instructors. You can practice them by yourself. So we don't know what, what was going on and what he was trying to do. Maybe he was practicing landings. You can't tell from the video. That's the yeah. Point. The video is not going. It's not telling them much. But the NTSB will look at it. Well, they'll definitely look at it, and they'll look at a lot of other things too. Yeah. Like the data recorders. There's two, right? That are in the plane. There are two in this plane. That they they uh, track the engine, what the engine was doing, the throttle position. Uh, they also track. The GPS track, the airspeed, the altitude. But I think it's also interesting the NTSB said that there wasn't a May Day call. And what situation do you think that it could have been where you would think that if something is going wrong, he would have called out or asked for help? What situation do you think it could have been where there's none? That's a common misconception, Alex, really? actually, because when you learn to fly, you're taught to do three things aviate, navigate, communicate. Communicate's the last, last. thing. If you have a problem in the cockpit, you've got to take care of that problem and make sure that you're safe flying before you worry about telling anyone else about it. Like he might not have known he was in trouble until like three seconds before he hit the water. Or less. Or, or less, yeah. Now, some pilots have weighed in over the last, the, during this week and saying maybe he wasn't experience, experienced enough to be doing what he was doing. We have no idea what he was up to. Was he just out there having fun? Probably so. Um, That's the point of flying, I, by the way. I know, to have fun. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to hurt anybody, he wasn't trying to hurt himself, he was just having some fun. You could tell it was something that he loved, he's always had an interest in flying. I don't know. So, you, you just can't tell that much from that, that, that video. People jump to conclusions. Do you think it's a possibility though, because I know they're saying NTSB, it's going to take maybe up to two years, that they can come out and say, hey, we still don't really know. Or for sure, with all the information we have from the engine and the data recorders, we're going to know pretty sure what it's, happened. It's tough to tell. Okay. I mean, they've got to interview the witnesses, find out what his intentions were. Uh, flying is supposed to be fun, especially if you're a private pilot. But you've got to do it safely. And uh, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered, uh, you know, when it's we're looking sad. at this crash. It's horribly sad. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Okay.